we just put the red truck away for storage. We get back to my house, Travis goes to leave, and the truck won't go in reverse. Sure enough. Um, even all the other gears started to get really hard to put it in. So I was like, well, let's drain the fluid. And what do you know again? Um, this is all metal shavings that were on the drain plug of the transmission that are sitting on there. It could be, I didn't take the drain plug out last time, I don't think. I think we drained the transmission somehow. I think it all came out of the tail, the tail end of it. Um, but I'm sitting under here and I'm looking around and sorry, I can't find the piece up oh, right here. A piece of our clutch slave broke off. I wish I had the, oh, the rest of it still under the truck. So one of the parts that it bolted onto, if this was the transmission, the clutch slave was sitting down here. So it's as if it's not pushing in to, you know, release the clutch enough to get it into gear. But even with the truck off, I go to put it in reverse and it's still not really liking it. So it doesn't look too good, but I figured I'll drain the fluid. I'll put a new clutch slave and we'll see what happens. I'll keep you updated. Good morning, guys. We are just leaving now in the old F-350. We're on our way to Auburn, Maine to pick up a transmission for that truck. Uh, I think we came to the conclusion that the transmission is pretty busted and we made an ad on Facebook and in two minutes someone said they had one and they, they don't want anything for it. So we're going to go pick it up. We're going to trade them a couple parts, but just super, super thankful for this. So we're going to go pick that up and see if we can get it in the truck. There we go, boys and girls. We got the transmission out on the truck. We're going to get it ready for the distance back. So we just got home. We're gonna back the four wheel drive up. I'm gonna put the two wheel drive on this patch of tar, lay down a blanket that's probably gonna get soaked and pull the transmission right out of that. And we got the new one in the truck. So the same as last time, this isn't really gonna be a how to video just because it's snowing right now. It's cold, we're on the snow. So we got our transmission over there. We gotta clean it up and we're gonna pull this one out right now. Okay, so I've never seen anything like this. We just changed this fluid and this is what it looks like like at maybe 30 minutes worth of driving time horrible this thing is cooked this thing is absolutely done oh my god so so far at this time we've gotten the starter out we have the drive shaft off uh i just got the transmission brace out and we got all the sensors unhooked so i think all we need to do now let me get under here as we just drained it out too is get the rest of the transmission bolts off you know the bell housing bolts that go to the engine and I think we can pull this out so we just manhandled our old transmission out you can see this one always had fluid all over it we've tried to clean it up and it just kept you know getting wet with trans fluid so here's our new one some slight differences we've noticed are like the splines go a lot further inside of this as they do you know for the for the drive shaft in there and this one's a newer model so we have some sensors up here as we don't on this one. But it also looks like these like pegs are pushed in on this and we have some longer ones here. So that should actually help us get this where it needs to be. So I'm gonna probably splash, I think, a little grease right here to help us get it in place. Change that bearing with this one. We should be good to go. So we've got the new transmission in now. It took a little bit of work. We had to lift up the front of the engine. Sorry, there's such horrible lighting, but we got it in. Um, we got to connect everything still. I got to put some bell housing bolts in. Got to put the brace on, the drive shaft. But I think we're going to get it tight enough for now and come back to it in the morning. We are back out here the next morning. It is 22 degrees out with windshield feels like nine. We've already been under here. We've already done quite a bit of work and we have a long, long ways to go. But it's coming together. Hopefully, uh, hopefully it works. So this is all worth it. <laughs> all right, so it's still, like I said, 20 something degrees. It took us a good part of the day, but we finally, we got, it on, we got it down, we started it. We are now gonna go for our first test drive. Wish us luck. Everything's tightened, everything should be good to go. All right, we're on some ice, but seems we have first gear. Nothing, nothing, nothing is a better feeling than seeing your hard work pay off. 
So as you guys just saw, our test drive went well. Like I said, I'm sorry I really didn't film a how-to. I've said it like multiple times, but it's literally 20 degrees out. We're laying on legitimate ice and snow, trying to get this done. Yo, what's up guys? So we're out here today with Travis's truck, and we have something big coming. Uh, it's really gonna change the look of the truck, and we are so hype about it. So let's get a walk around on this thing right now. As you can see, we got the LED bulbs, the old black grill with the square, you know, for square headlights. We have the corner lights right here with the orange in them. So we're so excited to get rid of that. Let's open up the hood and get right to it. So what we're looking at doing first is we're gonna remove all these clips holding the grill in. So now that the truck doesn't have a grill, these are the tabs you gotta turn to get the grill out. We're gonna focus on getting these headlights out now. So all it is is four 10 millimeter bolts that hold it in. We're gonna unscrew those and pop this right out on both sides. So one of the joys about working on rusty mini trucks is I think almost all of the bolts snapped except for one for this headlight, which is fine. I don't know if we reuse any of the same holes, but on this side, one of the bolts was like pre-stripped and thankfully I have this, uh, this little socket from Husky and it kind of helps you get out stripped bolts. So thankfully it's coming out, but it's probably gonna break. We'll just keep cranking at that and get these out though. Right here, we're gonna unplug the LED bulb from the original housing. Stuck in there pretty good, I guess. Oh, <laughs> there you go. But we got that out. Now actually, funny enough, this doesn't even matter. We're gonna end up cutting the wires right here to install our new pigtails for the rectangle housings. Another thing we got to do too, just to complete the disassembly, is there's three screws off Phillips head that hold in this corner light. You got one, two, and there's a third one straight across underneath. We're gonna take these out and unplug them and take the bulbs out and swap them into our other corner lights. So right now we have the old grill, the headlights, and the marker lights off. I think our next step is we're gonna try to see what it takes to mount up the Pathfinder headlight. So here we have our headlight. <clears throat> What's gonna happen is you're gonna end up using the hole up here, you're gonna end up using the factory hole down there, and right here you have these two holes. And what happens is, is you have a screw that comes out of the back of the headlight housing, and there's a second hole on top of it. What you gotta do is you put that in place, and we're gonna run a nut and bolt right here. It's like the only thing you need a nut and bolt for. So it's just three bolts that hold this thing in. All right, so something I really like to do, inside this, you can see the orange bulb. I hate the orange, let's get rid of it. So, we take our clear bulb, slap it back in, if I can get in there. Bam, done. Like I said, same thing, you take the bulb off, it takes five seconds, and it just, it makes such a difference. It makes your lights look legitimately clear. Pop it back in, done. Clear as can be. So now we're at a point where I just put some never seize up here. I'm gonna never seize all my nuts and bolts. Down here, we're gonna have to run a nut and bolt. If yours don't break, you can run a regular 10 millimeter. And like I said, you got these two holes. The bolt goes through this one the, on the housing. And then right here, you put your own nut and bolt. Same on this side, just to show you guys what we're really working with. I put some more never seize there. We can run a 10 millimeter there. We're gonna put our nut and bolt here. And then down here, it's the same story. So now my next step is we're gonna get these mounted and then wire in the headlight uh, pigtails. So one thing to take note of too, if you guys are doing this, is back here, you don't have a ton of space, so I'm actually gonna stop what I'm doing really quick. I just have one bolt holding that in. These are the old uh, connect connections, and right here we have our new pigtails. So we're gonna cut our wiring harness. We're gonna leave a little extra just in case we ever wanna reuse this for something. And we're gonna wire in our new wires, and then clip it in, bolt this in, and we'll go to the next step. So they're not connected just yet, we're just temporarily. What is, uh, what's that, is that our low or high? Low beams. Turn on high? Oh yeah, turn on, turn low? Beautiful. So what we have here is the middle wire, is our ground. Uh, right now we're on lows. So the wire on the right side of the pigtail goes to our, you know, silver spotted one. And then the one on the left side that just came unhinged goes on the red wire with the black stripe. So we're gonna properly connect all these now and send it. So right here, you'll see another thing that we did. We adjusted the headlights so they sit as straight as possible. 
All it is is there's a little screw up here that you gotta mess with and a screw down here. But we're pretty happy with how it looks. So now our next step is we're gonna put the grill on. This thing is coming together so well. Wow, that looks so good. If you, if you <laughs> don't mind the truck being so dirty, but wow, dude, we killed that. <laughs> Let's go. Uh, we just got the corner lights in. Now, this isn't even like the end of it. We have something else really cool coming in for the truck. It wasn't in on time, but we have a chrome grill coming in and it is just going to look amazing. It's gonna match the wheels, the trim, and just everything, door handles, mirrors, bumper. It's just gonna look so good with that chrome trim. And that's why we have the clear lenses with the chrome trim because the top here is gonna be chrome and then the middle insert's gonna be black. So it's gonna have an amazing look. But that right there is how you do the Pathfinder nose swap, essentially. Um, in time too, one of our big plans, you know, when the day comes is to get the three slotted hood in the front off like the earlier style hard bodies. But wow, we just, it looks so, so good. Those clear, clear headlights, the clear lenses all around. With that chrome grill, it'll just tie it all right up. So, while I've got the truck in here, uh, I actually had a spare cap for this. Perfect. It's, these, it's the little things. It's the little things that matter about a truck, you know? Alright guys, I'd like to thank you all for checking out this video. We got that transmission in in two days. I mean, it was just such a crazy process with it being so cold outside, but we're lucky to have even found that and get it in the truck. Also, I'd like to say that we are really happy with this Pathfinder nose. It just gives this truck a completely different look than all the others. But if you want to see more content, don't forget to like and subscribe, check out some more videos, and you can even hit that little bell at the bottom right corner to turn on post notifications so you know when new videos drop. But thank you so much for checking out this video.